Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we created our project and we installed Bolt. It was a short lecture, but it got us all to the same point where we can now begin building our game. So I'm going to go kind of quick because I'm going to assume that it's very unlikely that this is your first Unity tutorial. Most likely you've seen others, so you don't need me to walk you through this entire interface. But I will explain step by step what I'm doing, so if you're brand new, you can follow along. So over here on the right, we have the items in our project. And if we run the game now, we'll see that we just have a blue screen just to make sure everything's working that we can run the game and no errors everything is good so let's begin laying out what our interface might look like for the first phase of our game and I'm going to focus on health and hunger so health and hunger are the two variables that we use and so when you eat that's going to add to hunger but usually it'll take away from your health as as you eat and then your health is going to increase by sleeping or by taking drugs and other things to increase your health so let's go ahead and set up that interface we're just going to come down here and right click and you can really right click anywhere in here and I'm going to come down to UI and choose text so this is just going to give us a title for the game and if I double click on the text it's going to center it in right where the object is now you can see you can barely read it and if you come over here on the right we can click on this tab and bring up the inspector and any object we select over here we're going to get all the components listed over here that are associated with that object in this case we have this rec transform component and this is going to tell unity exactly how to position the object in the game world we have a renderer and that basically displays the object and then finally we have this text object or component here and this is really what we dropped on here and what we're most concerned about so for this text right here we can change this to say bolt life simulator so we set that like that we come down the color and we make it white we're gonna make it bigger 24 points and we'll make it larger there and center it. Now I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll out so that I can see the dimension of what our screen looks like in a standard Unity screen. So we can see this right here and it's representing our scene basically as it, it's going to look in the game. So we can jump over and see how it's going to look before we run it. Now let's go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger for our title and now I'm going to duplicate this text and just by right clicking and saying duplicate now you can see already we're getting strange names it says text text one it's gonna be really confusing so I recommend you always name everything so this is gonna be the title text and so that way you can look really real clearly here in your project and see exactly what the objects are named now this I'm gonna call health label text because this is going to be the label for our health. So the reason I duplicated this, and now I'm clicking and holding it and dragging it over here, is I didn't want to have to set the color and all that again. It's By duplicating it, I kept those. And But I am going to bump the size down a little bit, and I am going to left align it, and then we'll just come here and change this to say health. And so this is going to be the label for our health. And we need another one for hunger. Now we know we're also going to need one for cash as well, but I'm going to save that. We're just going to build what we need to build now to get health and hunger going and then we'll worry about our money later. So health and hunger and I'm going to now change this text to say hunger. Makes sense? Now I can duplicate both these and move them over and these will be where the actual values will be for our health and our hunger. So this will be health text and this one will be hunger text. Now when it's running and we've tied these into variables we're gonna have these displaying like 50 for health and 50 for hunger is what it'll start out at. But I don't recommend that when you're writing code and building games it's use, better to use placeholder so that way you know that you need to fill that in through program, programmatic means. So I'm gonna say hunger here to say that this is what we want that. And then actually, let's use an uppercase because I think we're going to use uppercase when we name our variables. And so I'll name this health. And I'll just put in brackets here. So that tells me 
that that's going to be a variable that we're going to assign. And I can run this just to see how it's going to look. No surprises. It's just five labels is all it is. Very simple. And if you move it around, it kind of moves. But we're not going to worry about too much of the transforms and pivots and getting this all lined up here. This is a course on bolts. So we're really going to focus on that aspect of things. So now that we have some labels that we can manage. Let's go ahead and set up some variables for our health and our hunger. Now you'll notice that right up here we have scene variables. So Bolt has already added this object, this game object here, and you can see it has a component here that says variables. And I can come over here and type health. And that's going to hold our health variable. And this makes a lot of sense to put health here in a scene variable because there's only going to be one health per scene and there's only going to be one hunger per scene. And so it's not always a good idea to use global variables, especially if you're building really complex games. But in this case, for the way Bold is designed, this is a perfect place to keep these variables. So I hit plus here and now I can pick from our variable type. So we have a lot of different ones here to look at. You can see they're color coded here. Numbers are blue, strings are orange, the booleans are purple. But we want an integer here for our health. And like I said, let's go ahead and start it out at 50. And now let's do the same thing for hunger, just like that. And I'm going to say int and say 50. So at this point, we have variables set up in our scene to hold our two important stats. And we have our labels over here to show them. But they're not tied together yet. And that's what we're going to use a flow machine for. So we could add the flow machine to the main camera or the scene variables. There's a lot of places we could put it, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new object specifically just for holding our flow machine here. So to do this, let's go ahead and right click here and say create empty. And this just creates an empty game object. And I can come in here and let's just call this our game manager. And we're going to put on it a flow machine by coming here and clicking add component flow I can type and we get the flow machine here and this adds it to this game manager we just created and at this point we can actually make it by coming here under the macro we really can use the embedded one because we're only going to have one of these ever on the entire game in the entire scene so I'm going to go ahead and click embed and we'll just call this the game manager flow machine and we'll click edit graph. Now I could leave this here and work with it here but instead I'm going to drag it down here so it's in docked and this is how I've been using it. You might have a better way and I would welcome students to leave feedback on maybe in maybe some screenshots of better formats or layouts that you like to work with. So here let's go ahead now under window and we can say variables and this will maintain all the variables across and we can like dock that down here as well and then finally I'm gonna go here and say pull down the graph inspector and I kinda like to have it dragged in uh, down here so if, if I click on things down here we can see information about our graph over here and this is the main graph that we have and you can see we have a start event so when the game starts up the uh, flow is going to come out here and when every frame we're going to have an update event so this would fire every frame well in this game design we're not going to use the update event and in fact you should always try to build your games around not using the update event unless you really need something that happens every frame so I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate that event because we don't need it and for the start event let's go ahead and set this health value here. Now one of the things we can do is we could just come right up here where we have health text and drag it right into our flow graph. And when we let go it brings up all the components basically that are on that particular object. And you can see the one here is the text that we had already worked with, right? And we had changed the values of. So when I choose that it gives us all these properties on it and you know you can see we can have the alignment of the text which remember we worked with that before but we did it interactively. Well this is how you would you know change it either setting it or get the value from it programmatically. 
but we're interested in setting the text. So we're going to come way down here, and you can see that down here we have a, a text and a set. And you can see at the bottom there that there's help that says the string value this text displays. And because we're setting it, that means we're going to set this value to something. So to get this to fire off, we need to flow from the start into this action. So I'm going to click here, hold the mouse button down, and just drag over. There's our first flow. Now, let me just go ahead and show how I can just type in here 50. And I'm hard coding this in. We're not using the variable. In fact, let me say um, 50 and put it in brackets like that. So you can see that it's what I'm typing in here in that box when I run that is going to update the text variable on the screen. Just like that. So how can we get our variable that's here in our scene variables right here in and updating the text instead? Well, that's what this little input is for. So you notice these inputs on this side and the outputs on that side. In this case, we need to input the value from here. Now, if I drag this out and let go, you'll notice that it says it's a string literal, and that's orange. And then over here, you'll see that our integer is blue. So we have what's known as different data types. The text object here is expecting a string. The variables, oh, I accidentally zoomed way out here. <laughs> the, the, and the, um, the integers here are blue. So it's the, the values that we're holding are integers and we need to display text. So let's see how we can do that. If I click here and I choose string literal, I could type the 50 in here as a literal. So this is, all, this is exactly the same as if I typed it in this box here. It's just now that I've created this link to this string literal, we can see that it's pulling it from here instead. So just to give you a complete idea of how these work, see how the 50 as a literal is there. So let's now instead take this variable, we're going to take this health variable, and we can just drag it right out here. And notice how we have a get variable, and it shows it here, it's health, and it's going to come out through here, and we could bring it right into there, just like that. But the problem is when we run this, as we'll see, we're going to get an error because the data types don't match. Just like that. So you can see here that it has an error. Well, and actually, it has an error because this needs to be chained to scene. When you drag this off of here, it isn't exactly smart enough. and it, It's not really, I would say, a bug, but it could be an, a, a nice fix that would be welcome is if you drag a scene variable off here, it'll change the variable to scene. So this needs to stay scene, but notice now when we run it, we're going to have the error here. And it turns red. And if we come here to the console, we can see that it says cannot convert from system.int32 to system.string. It can't automatically make that conversion. But fortunately, we have a simple way to do that. We just drag from here and let go. And we can type to string right here. And it gives us many options, but the one that would make most sense, obviously, and you can see the blue coding right here, the, the blue tells us that this is an integer to a string. So let's choose that. And you can see now that we can come out and get variable into the two integer to, to string. And now we have an orange that can match to the orange here. So now our colors match up. The green means it can be whatever coming out. But we're converting it from an integer to a string. And now it's coming out into health text. So let's go ahead and hit play. And just like that you can see that our health is at 50. So I'm going to stop this lecture. You saw how I set it up for health text and in the next couple lectures we're going to do an assignment where you're going to do the exact same thing but you're going to create the flow graph for hunger.